Hello everyone. Happy Halloween. I have a spectacular recipe for you today. I'm Kristen Madreen, or I should say, I'm the voodoo priestess today. And welcome to the Quick and Carry Kitchen's annual holiday extravaganza for Halloween. How are all of you today? Thank you to those of you who are joining us live. Hello. Hello to all of you who are joining us later. We love that some of you are live and some of you watch when you get home from work. So what are we making today? We're making little corn dog bites in the Instant Pot. And these are a perfect recipe for children, both to eat because they are fun and a little weird and so they're perfect for Halloween, but also this is a recipe that your kids could make. And so I'm hoping that those of you who know people with Instant Pots and kids will share the show and the recipe to them today because this is fun and it would be perfect little supper on Halloween night uh, before you go out trick-or-treating. This is something that the kids could make and eat. So what do we have here? First of all, I want to tell you that in electric pressure cauldron number one over here, we've made Creo Brew, which was our Halloween show last year. It was our first Halloween show and we had a lot of fun doing it. And we used a recipe from Marcy Butter over at uh, tidbits.com for her Creo Brew. And so this year I wanted to have a cauldron of Creo Brew for the team here at Quick and Carry for our lunch and for our afternoon. And I even used some of our vanilla that we made last week in the Creo Brew. So I'm super proud of that and that is awesome. And then in electric pressure cauldron number two, we're going to make these cool little bites. So let me show you what I've done to prep. First of all, I'm using our Quick and Carry silicone egg bite molds and um, I have sprayed them with a, a cooking spray uh, really, really well because you want these bites to come out very easily. And then in each little one, I hope you can see this, is a little piece of hot dog. I took four hot dogs and I cut them in the middle, cut them in half, and then I cut each of those in half. And you want to do your best to make a nice straight cut because you want to stand them up in each of these little egg molds. Okay. And then I have made a little batter right here. And I'm going to put a scoop of batter. This is a cornmeal batter. And I'm just going to put some over each of the little corn bites. And you fill them about two thirds full. Usually for me, it's about a scoop and a half. And you want to put the hot dogs in first. This was one of Marcy's, um, this is also a Tids, Tidbits recipe. So shout out to Marcy over at Tidbits for her amazing website. Her blog is just fantastic. It's beautiful. She does a great job and her recipes are wonderful. And this is a really cool thing to do with kids or just let the kids do themselves because you can't mess this up. So in Marcy's recipe, she uses Bob's Red Mill cornmeal mix. And at my grocery store, I could not find that. So I got a different cornmeal mix and you can use whatever you have. You could even make your own cornmeal mix. But because of the sweetness of this, I think it was nice. I used, um, well, no, I can't remember the name of the guy. Um, so there, do you see how I've got one all the way full? And I'm going to show you what I'm doing with this. I'm going to set that one there before we actually put it in the Instant Pot. Because this is an important trick and I think it would be worth it to show you where you can see, because you can't see down in our Instant Pot very well. You use some lids, some rings, from your canning jars like this. And you set them over some of the holes of the bottom one, just like this. So see, I'm putting those there. And then when these go in the pressure cooker, you can 
set this one on top of it and everybody will have enough room to rise. You could do this if you were just doing an egg bite. You could do this for any of the recipes that you use an egg mold for. It's a great way to separate the molds without having to use another trivet. So I think that's great. And you know, last week I used the little lids um, to put the jars on the bottom of the Instant Pot because I didn't have a trivet with me and I never even would have thought to do it this way. So thanks, Marcy. This is a great way to do it. All right, now I'm just gonna clean this up just a little bit, getting all of that in there. It's not gonna really matter. I'm gonna fill this one up a little bit more. There we go. And what you wanna do when you put them down in the Instant Pot like this is set them a little squeegeed, which is a technical term for sideways. So I hope you can see that I didn't put each cup directly above the one below it because I want there to be room and these uh, metal rings keep the second one up off. So I'm going to stop for a second and say hello. Hello, Mr. Boy, how are you? Dougie Boy, nice to have you there. Hey, hey, Bernard. You are with me today, Cammy Dragon, Joanne, nice to see you both. Hi, Amy Maine, Cindy Redden, oh, and my dear friend Diane Yoko from the show. Uh, all right. Nice to see all of you with me. So here I'm going to take this top one. I have a cup of water and my trivet down in the Instant Pot. You hold on to this for me, please. Nope. Okay. I'm going to carefully put the first little guy down. The egg mold is first in. Now I'm going to take these lids, these rings, and put them around three of the openings. And then I'm going to take this one and set it again, not quite even up so that it's sort of lifted away from the one below it and it didn't stay. So I'm going to do it again. And that didn't stay either, so here they come. I'm going to problem solve, add another ring. Maybe that'll do it. And I am trying to keep the rings over the holes of the egg mold down below, but I also want it to stand up there. Four was the perfect trick. Okay, so now we're going to put on our lid. And I want to double check what I have on my recipe. You cook it at high pressure for 10 minutes and then do a 10 minute natural pressure release. And then when you take the little guys out of the cooker, you want to very carefully, I used, you know my favorite thing in this kitchen is my quick and carry tongs. I used a hot pad and the quick and carry tongs to bring them out and set them on my uh, cooling rack right here. And I let them cool for at least 10 minutes. They come out very, very hot. And then you'll notice that they look a little moist, like everything that is baked in a pressure cooker, they are a little moist when you do them. So let them set for a few minutes and then take a spoon and flip them out onto a plate. And this is what they end up looking like. They're very cute. They're kind of weird, which like I said before, makes them absolutely perfect to use for a Halloween a little supper or just something fun for the kids to make by themselves after school. Uh, this is just a great recipe for kids and kids can both do it or they can uh, just eat them with you. I think kids of all ages will really like this. You know, I have three kids and Halloween is their favorite holiday. Even now as adults, um, my kids love Halloween. Every November 1st, they began preparing for the following Halloween. As soon as one was over, we were prepping for the next one, planning our costumes. Where would we go trick-or-treating the next year? How much candy could you get in a different neighborhood? I mean, my kids took it super seriously. And even now, my youngest son, who is 28 years old, he wishes that we would just give each other gifts at Halloween instead of at Christmas. So. Um, we love Halloween. My favorite thing now that my kids are grown is passing out candy 
and I'll be there on Halloween night um, watching all the trick-or-treaters and playing scary music. I'm that crazy lady in the neighborhood who plays uh, crazy music out her windows while the kids trick-or-treat. So I love having a little party for Halloween and this is the perfect thing to keep your kids warm. Make a pot of Creo brew. It keeps really well. It, you could put it in a carafe. Um, you can sweeten it to the desired level as you want. That's available on our website. And then this too, if you like the recipe, let us know by commenting down below. So here's what I'd like you to do. I'd like to first of all congratulate uh, the three people that won last week won a, a set of our awesome Quick and Carry Tongs, Annette Accord, Debbie Molden, congratulations to all of you. And uh, this next week, we will be giving away three of our egg molds, like you saw me just use. In the we have our own Quick and Carry egg mold. To you who comment down below, on what is your is your best costume? What is your favorite costume? What is the best costume you've ever seen at a Halloween party? I love hearing about people's costumes. And so please leave your comment down below with whatever costume is. And three of you will win a, a silicone egg mold from the Quick and Carry Kitchen. So, and also remember, we love your comments, your questions, your ideas. The conversation that we had with all of you last week after the vanilla show was wonderful. Super great ideas. We so enjoy that. So please keep your comments go uh, coming. We really, really take it seriously when you have an idea for us for a future show. And we'd really, really like to uh, keep the conversation going with you. Oh, <laughs> hi, Connie Munson. Do you like my new hairdo? I do too. It's really lovely today. Um, Cindy Redden, you love the kids' recipes. Do we have more? I don't off the top of my head, but I will find a couple for you because I do think that the Instant Pot is super safe and it's something that kids can get involved with at home. So that would really be fun. Hi, Christine Lemmerman, how are you? Hi, Ruth Light, a Transformer. Oh, that would, I bet that's a great one. Um, hi, Leanne, how are you? Nice to see you here. Um, Kathy Leathers, Debbie Pittman from Asheville. So glad that you showed up today to be here for the show. Let's just do a little quickie review. You're going to make a cornbread mix. I used, um, it's cornbread, butter, a cornbread mix, baking powder, butter, water, and an egg is what you make in your bowl. Then you put your little sliced hot dogs in a very well sprayed silicone egg mold. Put the hot dogs in first so they stay down. They will end up looking like a little puffy round thing and most of them you can see the hot dogs in. If you have popsicle sticks it would be fun to stick them in here for the kids. Um, you can make a nice little spider web. I made a spider web ketchup and then with mustard and I used a knife to make a nice little spider web for dipping. It won't stay pretty for very long but it's still another fun thing for the kids to do. Somebody could do that while you're getting the rest of the stuff done. Um, you pour the batter with a scoop. You really only want to use about mm, a scoop, a scoop and a half of batter and you're going to get a nice looking little egg bite mold shaped um, corn dog which are a lot of fun. It only takes 10 minutes in the pressure cooker and then a 10 minute natural pressure release. Release them, uh, the rest of the pressure. Bring them out to cool and they will evaporate some of the moisture off the top and they won't look quite so shiny. After they've cooled a little bit, remove them with a spoon, serve them warm with your favorite condiments and you have a lovely kid-friendly recipe for your Halloween party. So um, let me see if we have anything else. Oh, sorry, I apologize to everyone that I had a little uh, microphone problem. It's the hair and the veil and the whole getup, I think, getting in the way. Um, have a happy Halloween.
what uh, I will be doing is I will be all dressed up with the spooky music and my porch all decorated because I am that crazy lady who lives at the end of the street uh, with her cats. And um, I love to celebrate. I might wear the same thing, but I think I'll put a witch's hat on it because you know what? I am a great witch and I am going to give you my closing witch's laugh. And instead of what I usually say at the end of one of our shows, um, honoring the patron saint of the Quick and Carry Kitchen, um, Julia Child, this year I'm just going to leave you with a great big happy Halloween to all of you and <laughs> have a happy Halloween.